welcome back to the class of English Literature. So today the story that we are going to read is about a detective, a kind of a suspense and thriller story. I hope most of you like suspense and thriller movies. Now to talk about some of the stories you must have heard about Sherlock Holmes. He was a fictional detective and a very good you know, story man who could uh, keep on detecting a lot of uh, scenes and a lot of cases. So in this chapter, we are going to study a very suspense story. I'm sure you all are going to like it. Now before starting the story, I would like to tell you two basic things. First of all, I'll tell you the entire story in a summarized form. Because this chapter is not the complete chapter, it is an excerpt. Excerpt is a small portion taken from a book, a novel or anything. So all the characters are here but the story is not full but still I tell you the complete story. So the story is that we are going to talk about a city in England. The story is of one of the cities of England. Stylus Court. Stylus Court is a huge building. Like you can say a big building. You know, royal people live there. Now, who's the royal person? Emily Cavendish. Emily Cavendish is a female. She's an old, elderly female. She's, you know, very old. And she's a widow. Her husband has died. Now, who was her husband? Late Mr. Cavendish. Now, he was a very rich and respectable man. So after he died, all the amount, all the money, all the property was transferred to Emily. And this stylus court is a property of Cavendish only, which was transferred to Emily after his death. Now you need to listen to the story. It is a very, very interesting story. The story here shows that this female is murdered. Emily is murdered all of a sudden. Now because she is murdered, murdered, there are a lot of suspect. The police takes a lot of suspect. The police believes that there can be many people involved in this. Now for you, it is very important to know that she has again married a young man who was younger to her. His name is Alfred Inglethorpe. So after marrying to Alfred Inglethorpe, her name also changed to Emily Inglethorpe. Now Emily had two children. Now the names are John Cavendish and Lawrence Cavendish. He is already dead. She is alive as I am telling you right now. She got married to Alfred Inglethorpe. These two children she had from late Mr. Cavendish. John Cavendish and Lawrence Cavendish. John is married to Mary. So now in this stylist court, how many people are living? Emily Cavendish, Alfred Inglethorpe, Lawrence, John. Up till here. Now there is another character, Evelyn Howard. She is actually a companion or you can say a friend of Emily. Right? Next is Dorcas. If you can see here Dorcas, it is the servant. Dorcas is a servant. She is a female servant. She is also living in this stylus court. So when Emily married Alfred, what happened? Alfred came to stylus court. Now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and few more people, they are living in this stylus court. Now who murdered Emily and why could they murder? Now the possible question that may arise in your mind is, the closest people to Emily could have murdered her and the closest are either Lawrence and John, their children have murdered for the property because they know the entire property is on name of Emily or his, her husband Alfred might have killed her because of the property. Now there is one interesting thing to note which will give you more hint towards the suspect. According to a will, Emily had already written a will. You all know this, you must have seen in movies also. When somebody dies, they write a will that after my death, my property will go to this person or that person. So Emily had actually written a will that after her death, all the property will go to John Cavendish. It will be transferred to John Cavendish. And 20% she can decide or she can change. But 80% of the property will be given to John. 
So the biggest aspect here can be taken as John because of the property he must have killed her own mother. Now in the story, what we will see, there is another person which I forgot to mention is Lieutenant Hastings. His full name is Arthur Hastings. Arthur Hastings. He is the narrator of the story. Okay. And he is actually close to this family also. So this man is in conversation with Dorcas. Dorcas and Lieutenant Hastings or Arthur Hastings are discussing. So Dorcas tells her tells this man that uh, dear Arthur Hastings, you are going to meet a man today and he is a Belgian detective. That man is a Belgian detective. Now why is he meeting him? Because he wants to know who has killed Emily. He is interested in knowing who has killed Emily and this entire case is very fishy. That means it is very mysterious affair. Mysterious means very complicated, very disturbing and it is not possible to find out who has actually murdered Emily. So Hastings and Dorcas are communicating and Dorcas tells him that today you are going to meet this Belgian detective but I want to tell you something. This man, Hercule Poirot, his name is Hercule Poirot, he had asked Dorcas if any member of the family had a green dress. So now Hastings said, yes, I remember about the green dress. Is there any green dress in the house? She says, I am not sure, but there is a room. There is a small room which is known as attic. There is a chest of cupboards kept there. You may go and find out. Probably you may find a green dress there because there are so many fashionable items kept. So now when she tells about this green dress, this Hastings, he moves away from the house and he is going to meet the Paulette, her cue. But on the way they both meet and they came back, they come back. One thing to note is Lieutenant and her cue, they are good friends. That is why he has asked him to find out the suspect, to find out who has killed uh, Emily. So now both of them have come home, come back home, the same place where they are living, status quo, and they enter the home through a window. And they don't go anywhere else. They only go to that attic room where Dorcas has said that they can find a green dress. So when they enter the room, they say that they, they, what they see, there are a lot of things, old things kept. And then there is a chest of cupboard. When they open it, it is almost empty. There are very few things kept. But the most shocking thing that they found is a small moustache or a beard. A small beard is there and there were few portions of hair. So this Hercule, he shouts, see what is in my hand? I got some beard. Now whose beard is this? So they come back to Dorcas. Hercule says, thank you so much Dorcas. You told us about this cupboard. We have found a very unique thing in that. Can you tell us that who used to put these things in the cupboard? Or are these things frequently used? So Dorcas says, I think they are not frequently used. But yes, sometimes we have you know small parties or functions. So we wear all kind of dresses, we wear costume and when we wear the costume, we use moustache and beard. So probably this is that moustache. So he asked again, do you remember who, whose moustache it could be? So she says, um, Mr. Lawrence. Lawrence here is the son of Emily. She says, Mr. Lawrence has a habit of, you know, dressing himself in the party. He must have dressed as, you know, as a king and he must have used that moustache or beard. And so it is kept there. So now when they again check the beard, it was trimmed. It was trimmed in the form of Mr. Inglethrop. Like it showed that the beard looks like the beard of Inglethrop. It was intentionally trimmed and it was kept in the cupboard. Now Hercule told Hastings that you see who must have kept this beard into the cupboard and with what intention he must have kept so that some of the you know things cannot be found out. Now both of them again try to find out who could be the possible solution. Now Hercule is saying Dorcas, I don't think Dorcas is a good substitute. I don't think Dorcas is able to figure out the problem. I need to find out somebody who is not related to us. I need to find a strong ally. Ally here means a strong support. 
Now when he says that I need a strong support, Hastings says that why am I here for? I am your biggest support, I am telling you. But Hercule says no, I want someone who is not related to all of us, who is slightly different from us, who is slightly disrelated to us. And who is that one person who can give a good clue or a correct clue? That person is Evelyn Howard because she is not from the family so she will not be biased she is a friend and companion so she can give you know a idea Hercule says that if any incident happens in a family so the close people can tell them by a assumption or by you know they, they have the instinct Suppose children, you give an exam and you have not prepared well. So your natural instinct tells you that today my exam will not be good. Or suppose if your sister is crying and her sister's best friend is known to you. So you will have an instinct. Ki, hmm, I think she must have fought with her friend. So there is a natural instinct. So this detective thought of using a natural instinct. He told that you ask this Evelyn. She was a very good friend of Emily. Maybe she can reveal some secrets. Maybe she can tell if something has happened, some argument was done or if Alfred was disturbing her. Now another point to note here is Evelyn was a nice lady but she never liked Alfred. Now why she didn't like it is not mentioned. She was very protective of Emily and she really disliked Alfred. So when Hercule met Evelyn, she was a little confused. She said, see, Emily has been given strychnine poison. It is a kind of a poison. The reason of death of Emily is strychnine poison. She says, I don't know who did this, but somebody who has got this medicine is the prime suspect, is the prime person who could have done this act. So she said that Alfred and John, both had gone to the market to buy this. Now again the situation came, how to find out who has done the murder. So she says the one person who has brought this is going to be the suspect and is going to be the last person who must have murdered Emily Cavendish. So the story ends here with the statement of Evelyn Howard and the story is still not complete. It is, it is shown till here that these are the characters, the main story and yes, this story was in the time of world war. The world, it is shown that this incident happened when the world war was going on. So, you know, when something like this happens, the newspaper, the media coverages, they are all covering this portion, right? If you see in the news these days, they choose, the media chooses a particular topic and it is shown everywhere on the news channels. Most of the news channels, you can say. So, similarly, all these incidents were covered in the newspaper and in the chapter it is not mentioned but actually the real murderer of Emily Cavendish was Alfred Inglethorpe. Now it's a big novel, it's a big summary I'm telling you. So now I'll give you a small homework. Go and find out how did Alfred Inglethorpe killed Emily. In, this, in, the, in the chapter, like in your book, it is given half. Only we have seen that these people are trying to investigate. There is no conclusion. But Actually, in the novel, Alfred was the one who killed Emily Cavendish. So now you need to figure out how he did. And I hope this chapter was clear to you. Let us quickly summarize so that everything is clear to you. I have told you already, Emily Cavendish was married to late Mr. Cavendish. He was a rich man. He was the owner of Stanis Court. When he died, Emily became the owner of Stanis Court. She had two children from late Cavendish. One was John, the other was Lawrence. John was married to Mary. Emily had a strong companion, a good companion, who was Evelyn Howard and the new husband was Alfred. The main two suspects were Alfred and John. Why was John the suspect? Because according to Emily's will, all his property will go to John. So naturally, everybody was suspecting that John could be the possible murderer. Next, we have a Belgian detective here who is Hercule Porret. is a very good friend of Lieutenant Hastings, Arthur Hastings, who is the narrator of the story. So, narrator takes help from Hercule. They meet many people. They go to the house. They meet Dorcas, who is a servant, who is a loyal servant. She tells everything clearly. They meet Evelyn Howard and the investigation is in process. 
I hope the chapter is clear to you. If you have understood the chapter, please go like and subscribe your YouTube channel.